Welcome to 319 Event Center. I'm your host, Rachel Cahoon, and this is Show Me Chefs. Today in our first semifinal round, Chef Anna and Chef Kim will cook with everything they have if they want to move on to the finale and win the grand prize of $3,000. Let's go see how our chef's prepared. Hi, Chef Kim. How are you Hi. doing? Great. So you've been in the Show Me Chef's kitchen before. How does it feel to be back? It's exciting. Yeah. Ready to go. Yeah. Do you have any nerves coming back in here? I don't think so. I'm feeling pretty good going into today. I don't think you're really able to prepare for something like this. You have to go in knowing that anything is possible. Uh, going into last time, I knew a little bit about Daniel, but with her, I don't know anything. I think that maybe makes it a little more difficult. We chefs have big egos, and we like to be told that we're doing a good job. It's self-promotion, it's business promotion, everyone wants to be a success. It is a male-dominated industry, and so I feel like showcasing female chefs and you know, that we are just as good or better you know, makes a big difference. On the line, it's my reputation. And Chef Anna, welcome back to the kitchen also. Thank you. So, what are you looking forward to being back in the kitchen today? Just cooking again and having fun with whatever we get in these baskets. I feel pretty good, a little bit nervous, but excited to see what this round will have. I've actually told myself this morning, I was like, I'm just gonna be happy no matter how it goes. I'm really wanting to grow things in Springfield, um, so it would be a wonderful opportunity to tell people, you know, hey, go watch this on the show and I don't know how Kim works. She's probably really great in the kitchen so I'm trying not to let that or the aspect of this is right before the final one get in the way of anything and I just want to enjoy it. Chefs, for the first round it is the appetizer round where you will have 20 minutes to create the perfect dish using the mystery ingredients in those baskets. You know what I'm gonna say next. <laughs> Let's unveil those ingredients. Okay, chefs, your ingredients are espresso cookies from the Artisan Oven, jalapeno cheddar cheese curds from Edgewood Creamery, dried strawberries from Mama Jean's Natural Market, Missouri cow de bois from Missouri State Winery and Distillery, and smoked trout from Rockbridge Rainbow Trout Farm. There's a little more ingredients in this first round, aren't yes, there? Yes, yes. You guys like those? A little different. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, well, chefs, you will have to create the perfect dish using these ingredients. You will also have the pantry provided by Mama Jean's Natural Market, a spice rack provided by Down to Earth Foods, and bread provided by the Artisan Oven. You ready to start this first round? So, yeah. chefs, your time starts now. So when we opened the mystery baskets, I was shocked. There was quite a few ingredients in there and they all did not seem to go together. <laughs> I stood there for a few seconds going, what am I gonna do with all this? <laughs> this time I'm going into it more with a broad idea of, well, I might try something like this, you know, because I kind of know what's in the kitchen now. Now it's time to meet our panel of judges. Our first returning judge is Mary Fawcett, co-owner of Bambino's Cafe. Our second returning judge is Joy Robertson from Color 10 Ozarks Live. And our final returning head judge is Angela Winathantri, executive chef and general manager here at 319 Event Center. Pretty exciting because we got it's very exciting. awesome ingredients, you know, smoked trout. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Which I love. cookies. Yes. And <laughs> it's not going. They're having a hard time opening the wine bottles here. Yeah. Can I have a sort? <laughs> There you go. There we go. I wondered. I'm not a wine drinker. I was having a heck of a time opening that wine bottle. So the judges helped a little bit, thank goodness, because I probably would have just smashed it open. I'm sorry to say, if there's anything I can do, it's open the wine. Yeah, there you go. I'm a beer drinker. <laughs> there you go. Chef Kim, what kind of a 
flavor is that? Um, it's very sweet and very fruity. Okay. Yeah, it was good. It was sweet and very mild. Um, so it was easy to put into my sauce with the strawberries, and I used some dates, and those are already sweet, and then a little bit of rice vinegar, so it kind of complemented the sweet and then a little bit of tart in there. Show Me Chefs will return after this. We're here with Melissa Fletcher, her and her husband run Edgewood Creamery. So this wasn't originally a cheese making place, right? In 2001, we moved our dairy farm here, and we've just been basically a dairy farm, grass-based, pasture-based dairy farm since 2001. 2015 is when we opened up the creamery, so we needed a little more income. Uh, and we couldn't really expand the farm uh, cow-wise or land-wise, so we decided that, you know, our milk is really high-quality, good grass-fed milk, and we decided to turn it into a good quality cheese. It tastes really good milk, I, I think, to make good cheese. Grass-fed milk, there is a difference in the taste. It's just got a really unique, good taste to it. It's just the way a cow needs to be fed. They enjoy grass. <laughs> it's their favorite food. It's amazing to me that what we make here, that chefs actually take and work with that and make them into these delicious dishes. It's exciting to see that happen. I turned the, the cookies into a spiced crouton. One of my fears, actually, I kept checking the, the croutons in the oven, whereas there was actually chocolate chips in those cookies, and I didn't want them to just melt because I had diced them up. Chefs, you have 10 minutes left. So I made kind of like a, I would call it a streusel topping for the salad. And the cookies, actually, I was expecting something like that one of these rounds, so that was okay. I guess if I had more time, I would have planned it differently. The cheese was the only thing that threw me off a little. Then I realized, oh, I need to incorporate this somehow. I just knew it was going to be an extra component to what I was wanting to do. So, Joy, this is your first time back on season three. Mm -hmm. What are you looking forward to on today's show? You know, the last season was so much fun. I was here for the finale. Um, and so I've been eager for almost a year to get back here. Yeah, here I am. So, uh, you know, I just am in awe of the talent that we have in this area. And I, when I look at these ingredients, I think I would have no idea how to put these together into anything that's even remotely edible. So they, they never cease to amaze me. Right. I'm looking forward to some great food, yeah. great creativity. Yeah. yeah, I'm the same way as you. I would never know how to use the mystery ingredients and make them, yeah, taste good for everybody. So I used the wine and the strawberries and the vinaigrettes um, and ended up making a salad. Last time I had 15 minutes for the appetizer round, for the lightning round, and this one we had 20 and it felt a lot shorter. And I think part of it was dealing with so many different ingredients. Let's go see what Catherine's baking over at the Artisan Oven. Hey guys, I'm Catherine. Well, it's raining today, so let's go warm up inside our season sponsor, the Artisan's Oven. We're here with Craig Crosby. He's the owner of Artisan Oven. Thanks for meeting with us today. Thank you, my pleasure. So can you kind of describe everything you all do here? Because you do a lot. Uh, primarily we do uh, wholesale baking for a lot of the restaurants here in town. And then uh, other than that, we have our storefront and we do uh, lunch and soups. And uh, on the weekends, we have some breakfast specialties. So what's the best part about working at the Artisan Oven? I think it's just the reactions that we get from our customers. Um, to insert a European style baking principle to the breads, offers more flavor, more texture, and, uh, and it's just a better product. And uh, our ingredient lists are much shorter than you would find in the store. You've donated a lot of unique stuff to the show. And so if you got something like espresso cookies, what would you do with them? Well, you'd have to just kind of deconstruct and, and reconstruct the components of it. You know, it's got, it's got a little bit of softness on the inside, crunchiness on the outside. You know, you got to, you know, you get to use a little bit of imagination. You taste it, you feel it, you, know, you break it apart, and you see what it'll do. That's part of the excitement of the show. Uh, this is a way that I could contribute and, and know that I was at least offering something to to the competition. Well, that's cool. And yeah, yeah they use your bread every single episode, so yeah. yeah. Well, that's really great. I appreciate that. Well, we appreciate you. Five minutes remaining, chefs. Hey, Chef Anna, have an idea what. Uh, direction you go with the appetizer round? Halfway. Halfway. Yeah. Whenever I'm like doing something, I do everything fast. Um, so I was like on a mission to finish it. I can't stand not being busy. Smoked trout was nice because it was already cooked. Um, easy to do like a salad type thing. 
I deep fried the cheese curds, because who doesn't love deep fried cheese curds? <laughs> and I think that's a guilty pleasure in life. I definitely know that I have the skills to, to compete, and I'm pretty sure I have the skills to win the whole thing. You know, I don't want to sound cocky, but I think you need some sort of, you know, a little bit of cocky confidence going into something like this. I just gently treated the smoked trout, warming it through with some honey and spices. And I really needed it all the time this time. One minute to go, chefs. I like working with anything that I can use to garnish the plate, make um, the presentation really good. I felt like 15 minutes was longer last time. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I do feel that. I really felt this two days round ticking by much faster than what we're used to. 30 seconds to go, chefs. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Chefs, your time is up. Good job. Working in a barbecue restaurant, presentation is always important, but you know, I serve food on paper trays. I just knew I could have done better. I'm gonna just try to be more focused, I guess. Show me chefs will return after this. All right, chefs, in this appetizer round, you had 20 minutes to create the perfect dish using all of the mystery ingredients. It's now time for you to present your dish to the judges. Chef Kim, you will present first. So today in front of you, I have a very simple salad with the smoked trout, some fresh radish, the deep fried jalapeno cheese curds, and croutons made from the espresso cookie. And then the wine and the strawberries are in the vinaigrette on the salad. The, um, the dressing. I think it's very good. It's, uh, it has a tanginess to it. I think it's very tasty. You know, there are a lot of a lot of components to this, a lot of different flavors. I like the way you can sort of move around the plate and enjoy them alone or put them together, and it's still very nice. I like it. I think it was a very nice presentation on the plate. It looked a little bit like abstract. All right, with the lettuce <laughs> going across the plate. Thank you, Chef Kim. Thank you. Chef Anna, it's now time for you to present your dish to the judges. I made a warm trout salad and made a sauce beside it. I used one of my favorite ingredients, dates. Um, Date Lady, they're local. So I put that with the strawberries and the wine, um, boiled that, and then pureed it. I think this gin pulls this whole thing together. It complements the trout and the fresh fruit and the cheese. It's a, it has a wonderful flavor. I thought it did too. I think the jam is really good. For some reason, I'm kind of missing where the breading came in here. I've heard you mention breading a couple I, I used the wrong word. It was more just like a crumb base that I patted on A little on bit of a crumb? Okay. Yeah. Not breaded. Because I'm picking up some of it. Mm -hmm. um, the way you describe it makes me wish there were more of it. Yeah. You know, I'm sort of missing a little bit of the cheese, the jalapeno cheese. I know it's in there somewhere. Yeah. Um, Thank you, Chef Anna. Okay, chefs, it's now time for the judges to deliberate your dishes. You may now exit the kitchen. So judges, it seems as though the race is already tight just after the first round. How did both chefs do in the appetizer round? You know, given an unusual array of ingredients, I thought they did a really nice job. And I had a lot going on there, a lot of different components. I, there are things I wish I would have seen a little bit more there. I enjoyed each one of them. I'm just wondering why they heated the trout, though. I think that kind of intensified that smoky flavor in the trout, which is not a thing that I'm all that crazy about. I think she served a warm salad and mm -hmm. she served a cold salad. And I, on her part, she shouldn't have put it, put it on the stove. She kind of felt a little short on the presentation or actually putting the complete plate together. All right, so judges, you ready for the entree round? Yes. I'm ready. Yeah. All right, let's bring the chefs back in. Welcome back to the kitchen, chefs. How was the appetizer round? 
Frustrating. <laughs> Why do you say that? Uh, opening the wine bottle. I don't think I've ever had that much difficulty in my life. <laughs> well, look, you got through it. I did. <laughs> All right, chefs, this is the main course now where you will have 35 minutes to complete the perfect dish using the mystery ingredients in your baskets. And you will also have to spin the wheel behind me to find out if you cook with a penalty or add an extra ingredient. But first, we're gonna find out what's in those baskets. All right, chefs, your mystery ingredients are round roast from McDowell Farms, maroon blend wine from Missouri State Winery and Distillery, watermelon turnips, poblano peppers, and yogurt raisins from Mama Jean's Natural Market. Chef Anna, you ready to spin the wheel? Yes, sir. All right, let's do it. Close my eyes. Go ahead and spin. Horman's Lumberjack Sausage. It's right there, so yeah. All right, Chef Kim, it's your turn. Go ahead and spin the wheel. Nice, soft, easy <laughs> <Yeah>. spin. <laughs> Maybe my undoing. Ooh, oh my no saute pans. Okay. All right, Chef Kim. <laughs> it looks like you will not be able to use saute pans in this entree round. Okay. <laughs> you think you can do it? I think I'll make it. All right, you may return to your station. All right, chefs, you will have 35 minutes to create the perfect dish using these mystery ingredients and an extra ingredient if you have it. You guys ready to get this round started? Yes, let's do it. All right. Chefs, your time starts now. They took away my saute pans from the Wheel of Doom. So I had to replan what I was going to do. I will say I was a little bit taken back by the roast, because that's hard to cook so short. I tried to pound it a little bit at the beginning to soften it up, and so it would be so tough. Because the first thing I wanted to do was sear that beef, and it's difficult to do in a saute pan, or in a uh, stock pan. So Chef Kim has to kind of rely on the oven and some pot. She doesn't have the saute pan. Oh, she's smiling now. She's got to figure it out. Except, you know, the confidence is coming through her <laughs> smile. And I didn't want to cut it into steaks or anything like that, so first thing I went was in the oven. What's in that mix? Uh, paprika, onion, garlic, tarragon, um, white pepper, black pepper, smoked salt. What's the temperature on the oven? 500. 500. Wow. Okay. Show Me Chefs will return after this. Let's go meet our season sponsor, Horman Meats. My name is Erin Herman and I am the owner of uh, Herman Meats. We got started about 14 years ago. As we kind of were in the community more, we saw the need for people to, they wanted no hormone, non-GMO, no antibiotics. They want clean beef that they know where it came from. So we opened our West store about five or six years ago, and then um, this one we just opened in September. Our local producers, it's 100% their meat. The only preservation that we use is freezing, so everything that you'll find is going to be vacuum sealed and frozen. It's just clean, good beef. We are actually always searching out local products that we can bring into the store. A lot of times you'll find a lot of local at farmers markets, and they're there one or two times a week. This gives them a place that they are available all the time. So anytime somebody wants to come in, they can find something local, something that's handmade, and something that's not just on every single store shelf. Our best sellers are ribeyes, fillets. We do really well with steaks. Hillbilly Grillers are a really good seller, and it's sirloin or better steak chunk with cheese stuffed in it, wrapped in bacon, seasoned with our beef rub. Yeah, just start calling. As soon as you start planning your holidays, call, give us a call. Grader in the world, I don't. No, not the best grader. <laughs> nope. She does have another grader that she could probably use. Where's your grader? Oh. Yeah. I don't know. She made little potato crisps to have a little bit of starch there and add some texture. I thought I burnt my potatoes, but they actually turned out fine. 
I really didn't want to get the knives taken away. That was probably the one that I saw in there that I was most nervous about. But what Kim got was pretty bad too. How rude is that, your saute pan in the oven? I know. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Are you truly sorry? No. No? <laughs> yeah, I am. I've been really sad if I got that. I felt bad for you. I really did. Chefs, you have 15 minutes left. What is that? Had a, uh, Chef Kim, why did you just uh, put that in there? Uh, it's going to be a quick pickle for the radishes. Decided to pickle the turnip with some radishes to keep it really fresh and then do a reduction with the raisins and the wine. And made a kind of a fresh salsa out of the poblanos. I feel like I have to do a really good job. Push it up a few notches. Um, there's never been anyone culinary wise, but in school when I was doing music, Cameron and Susan Labar, they've been like amazing in promoting what I do and they got me really started on my business getting out there and doing more of it um, and stepping into things I would have never thought or tried. I do think that I am quick on my feet. I've got a few years experience on her so I think that might help as well. Anna is, is very quick. I did notice that she has a lot of speed. My turnips, I put in a food processor and put it in my sauce. The reason being, lots of times I've heard, you know, judges don't like when you just use the whole thing. Um, so that's why I wanted to put it in it. And it gave a little bit extra texture. I feel like I'm pushed every time, but I think I'm doing a lot more than I did last time as well. I don't feel like I did much actual cooking in the appetizer round beyond just frying and then warming up the trout. Five minutes remaining, chefs. Work with poblano peppers at all? Have I had them before? Uh-huh. Yes. Do you know what Wait. type of a flavor that, they, that that brings out? They're not what I think, I have a feeling. <laughs> They're like spicy, but not too spicy. Not too overly spicy. Maybe, and, I'm, and I like spicy stuff, too. So. I was happy with it. It was fun to work with the raisins and yogurt and melt them down. I made a butter maple glaze. When I saw the other ingredients, I knew they easily fell into what I was already hoping to kind of do. One minute to go, chefs. I got a little close on time. I'm really glad that, you know, in the end that it was my saute pans they took away and not five minutes because that was up on the, on the wheel. So I don't think I would have made it with a five minutes less. Last time, you know, Daniel and I were toasting and hanging out for <laughs> a few minutes. I, I guess I just feel like I had too many things going on. I wish I thought through it a little more. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ooh. Chefs, your time is up. I, I love presentation, so I really want to try focus on that. I was a little tunnel vision. I did notice her plate. It wasn't very colorful. Stay tuned for more Show Me Chefs. All right, chefs, in this entree round, you had 35 minutes to complete the perfect dish using all of the mystery ingredients in your baskets. It's now time for you to present your dish to the judges. Chef Anna, you will present first. I seared the meat. I did want it well done, but I covered it in a rosemary and lemon and maple and garlic. Those are like the flavors I used um, incorporated throughout the dish. And then I took potatoes and broiled them um, with a butter and garlic. I love these crispy potatoes. That's a great touch right there. Okay. I don't know if you tried it to get that, that you know, that I, I wanted crispy. them crispy, and then I forgot, so I was like, oh no, maybe they're too crispy, but it turned out okay. I really like the maple a lot. I think the maple adds a ton. I think that's very good. The meat is still overdone, right? Yeah, I know. Wonderful job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chef Anna. Chef Kim, it's now time for you to present your dish to the judges. So in front of you, you have pickled watermelon turnips and radishes with a raisin red wine reduction. And then the steak is rubbed and seared and topped with a fresh poblano that has been flame charred, uh, sort of like a chimichurri. 
Chef Kim, before they dive in, into your dish, how was it without the saute pans? It was a little more difficult than I thought. Um, I didn't really want to cut the meat down. Cooking a whole piece like that, you have better temperature control. And I wanted to sear it in the pan, and then I did have to cut it to get it to fit in the uh, saucepan to sear it. <laughs> <laughs> so they would have come in handy. Yes, yeah. definitely. <laughs> Just to make sure she kind of hit the mark on that. I love that. It's hard to cook this cut of meat. I think mm -hmm. you guys were both at a real disadvantage <laughs> in trying to cook this cut of beef in such a short period of time. And I think you did really well with it, considering that. Yeah, my first thought was to braise it with the red wine and the raisins. It's a very classic kind of French yep. way to go, but you can't braise in 35 minutes. No. <laughs> Thank you, Chef Kim. All right, chefs, it's now time for the judges to deliberate your dishes. You may now exit the kitchen. So, judges, how did both chefs do in this entree round? What do you think, uh, Joy, how Chef Anna did? I thought the watermelon turnips were lost in there, just didn't know where they were. I thought the meat was really, really tough. Kim, on the other hand, was, you know, lacking a saute pan, but rose to the occasion, got the meat cooked better, and then once again, put a lot more on the plate. With Chef Kim, they needed another element on that plate to kind of balance out the tangy and the tartness of the chili chili. That cut of meat is really kind of a handicap for both chefs. Yeah, it's a tough one. Right, yeah. and I do think that Chef Anna getting that sausage really helped her dish. It did. Yeah. It did it present more of a challenge. It yeah. really boosted the flavor of Yeah, well, that was kind of luck of the draw on the Yeah, the wheel. <laughs> very much so. Uh -huh. All right, judges, you ready for some sweets? Love yes. sweets right always. Now. All right, let's bring the chefs back in. Welcome back to the kitchen, chefs. After two intense rounds, we're on to the final one. How are you guys feeling? Good. Yeah, ready to go. Ready to get it over with? Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right, chefs, in this dessert round, you will have 25 minutes to create the perfect dish using the ingredients in those mystery baskets. Let's unveil those. All right, chefs, your ingredients are Parpadelli's dark chocolate pasta, Chamborsin dessert wine from Missouri State's Winery and Distillery, and kiwi, bacon, and pumpkin seeds from Mama Jean's Natural Market. Now, chefs, you will have to create the perfect dish in 25 minutes using these ingredients. Ready to get this last round started? Yes. Let's do it. All right, chefs. Your time starts now. Oh. Cheers. Cheers, Mary. The mystery basket, everything seemed okay until we kind of got to the kiwi. The kiwi threw me. When I saw the ingredients, I was like, oh, got to change some things around and I've never cooked with dessert pasta. Kiwi was also not what I would usually put in the dessert. Kim is a pastry chef, or used to uh, did work as a pastry chef in the past, right? I do, I also have a pastry degree as well. Wow. Chocolate pasta, I have not worked with it, I've seen it, so I kind of knew where it was going. It's not very sweet, it's made with a dark chocolate, it has a lot of those dark fruity notes that you get, so it's not extremely sweet. Beyond that, it's just like regular pasta. First, when I saw the pasta, I was like, I'm not going to cook it like normal pasta. That's, you know, what's expected. So that's when I decided to put in the processor. I was hoping it would turn into powder, actually, but that processor doesn't make it really tiny, so it was still pretty, little chunks in there, too crunchy. Dessert is something I'm very, very comfortable with. Meat is my bread and butter. You know, I've done barbecue and broken down whole animals and done this for many, many years, but dessert is a passion and it's something I love, so I think I'll be okay. Thanks to this season's pantry sponsor, Mama Jean's Natural Market, for providing me with today's t-shirt. Hi, I'm Diana Hicks and I'm co-owner of Mama Jean's. Not only at Mama Jean's do we provide a full line of grocery items, but some people, you know, don't have time and they like to have food prepared for them. So we branched out last summer in July and we opened MJ's Market in Delhi and that is the fresh prepared food items that are supplied to Mama Jean's from MJ's Market in Delhi. And I mean, there's everything from a sandwich menu, you can get any paninis or, you, or any of our paninis can also be made into a salad. 
There's a lot of vegan and vegetarian options, gluten-free. We also have a coffee bar where you can get lattes, cappuccinos, or just regular pressed coffee, and fresh pressed organic juice, and the cold and flu shot that will cure whatever ails you. What I would like people to know most about Mama Jeans is that it is a full line market. You can get everything here that you could ever possibly need. If you want to talk to one of our professionals about uh, any of our supplements or if you want to sit down in front of a mirror and try some of our facial care products or any of our makeup, then there's room for you to do that now as well. I mean, I think one of the greatest things about Mama Jeans and why people like to shop here is because of our employees. They are very knowledgeable about our products and they are super friendly. Another great thing about Mama Jeans is the customers. We have some of the best, most loyal customers around and we know a lot of them by name. It's just a lot of fun to interact with the people who have the same kind of vision as we do. Chip and I trying to make a crust out of the... Seeing. See what It'll you can work. come up with? Yeah. Okay. The noodles still are crunchy. I have an idea. So then I put them in a pan and boiled them. I had some nuts and stuff in there as well. It sort of thickened down, boiled down, and they were soft enough that they weren't crunchy anymore. I was trying to think of a way to combine all the ingredients and still kind of hold the integrity, and the first thing that popped into my head was the spaghetti pie. I took it out and mixed it with the bacon and some chocolate chips to give a little more creaminess to the dish. Bacon, chocolate chips, and chocolate and pasta. Chocolate pasta. Pan fried it like you do, you know, when you were a little kid and your mom made you eat spaghetti pie for dinner. <laughs> Chefs, you have 10 minutes left. So I knew I wanted to do something along the lines of a tart or a cheesecake. I had seen the mascarpone in the fridge earlier, I was all excited about it, and I opened it up and it's like, two-thirds of the way gone. So I just added you know, cream cheese and sour cream and made it more like a whipped cheesecake-ish sort of thing. This time I am a little bit nervous. Last time I knew who the winner of round one was going into the entree round. I kind of wish I knew who was, who was in the lead, so, but, you know, I think that breeds competition and you have to keep your game up. The kiwi, I was also like, I gotta do something unique with this. So that's why I decided to poach it with the wine. Blueberries, I wanted to have some kind of fruit syrup sauce, sort of, that's why I did that. Chefs, make sure all the ingredients, every single ingredient is incorporated into your dish. It's different cooking on the show because what I do in the restaurant is something completely different than what I put out on the show. I don't have time to, to do barbecue for 12 hours on the show, I have 15 minutes, but I want them to look at the dishes and be like, oh man, that looks really good. I wonder if the food at Lost Signal is just as good. And that makes them curious to come down and see you know, what we're putting out. Show Me Chefs will be right back. Let's learn more about care to learns Executive Director, Linda Ramey Grivey. Hello, I'm Linda Ramey Grivey, and I'm the Executive Director at care to learn care to learn is a fund that immediately meets students' needs in the areas of health, hunger, and hygiene. As the Executive Director, I work with my staff to ensure that we work with school districts to serve those students' needs. Currently, we partner with 32 school districts, primarily in Southwest Missouri and um, the St. Louis area. We work through the local school districts. We have liaisons at the districts who actually help identify the needs, and then we work with them to make sure those needs get met. We'd like to serve more students, so we're focused on growing so that more students' basic health and hunger and hygiene needs can be met. One of the things that I think is unique about care to learn is that we really focus on the child's self-esteem, so we try to use vouchers whenever possible. It's a voucher to Walmart for clothes or food, but at least they get to pick out their own. So if they decide they want a hoodie or they want a flannel shirt, at least it's their choice and it's something they've picked out. We are a fund because that means we can meet whatever need the child has. So today they may need clothes, tomorrow it may be food, and the next day it may be another student that needs a prescription. So by providing a fund that the school staff has access to, it really gives them that flexibility and so when people make donations directly in monetary ways, then we can fund whatever need that child has related to health, hunger, and hygiene. 
we always think of end of the year giving as things are coming up, so we'd certainly like people to consider Care to Learn as they're planning their end of year giving. But also in March, we have a program called Care to Kick It, where we like to kick poverty to the curb with the help of our shoppers in the community. We ask them to shop local, and then businesses give donations, so please watch for that in March. Welcome back to the kitchen. And that's a cool thing, you know, trying to promote our uh, local businesses. Oh, yeah. And, you know, they put their heart and soul into opening a business and creating products. That is products. so important. And it's not just for the sake of having locally grown food. It's more of a cultural thing because it brings people together. Yeah. Because we've kind of lost that going to the supermarket. Yep. We're very lucky around here to have so yes, many purveyors and farmers and passionate people. Passionate people. Really. really? Yeah. Yeah. Just one more time, make sure all the ingredients are used for the mix of that. <laughs> one minute to go, chefs. I also kind of like that rustic, messy look on the plate, and I decided to go for that then. I like splashed cocoa powder on the plates. It's like the sloppy, professional look. Is that, is that bacon? Yeah. <laughs> uh. I thought you didn't think I had it. <laughs> it's already done. All right. We were freaking out. Our body out. was we sweating were... too. I was going to feed you Rasta. It's my favorite. I started at the very beginning because I was like, I just want to candy this and have it done. Um, and so I done it, already stuck it up on top to keep it warm. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Chefs, Ooh. your time is up. Wow. That was wow. Fire. The pumpkin seed brittle that I made didn't have time to set, and I couldn't leave it off the plate because it had a secret ingredient in it. This whole round was, it felt more rushed. Show Me Chefs will return after this. Okay, chefs, in your final dessert round, you had 25 minutes to create the perfect dish using all of the mystery ingredients. It's now time to present your last dish to the judges. Chef Kim, you will present first. Sure. You have my take on a dessert spaghetti pie. I boiled the chocolate pasta in the wine and then added the bacon and chocolate chips to it and then pan fried it into a cake. You have handmade ricotta, lemon ricotta underneath, and then just a fresh salsa with the kiwi on top. The chocolate pasta is a little hard to eat, but boy, it's tasty. <laughs> really good. Why did you put that back in the pan? Because, I mean, now you cook the pasta. Why did you put that back in the pan? Just to make it crunchy or? Yeah, to give it a little crunch, um, to give it a little extra depth. I think it would have been better to have more of a, like, a cool pudding or something like that, rather than the ricotta. Really like the pumpkin seed. The pumpkin seed and the ricotta is really, really good. Thank you, Chef Kim. Chef Anna, it's now your turn to present your dish to the judges. It is a sort of like a disassembled tart. I made a sweet nut paste and then I, so I put the pine nuts in there. I also put the pasta, some other nuts, cocoa, and then I made a mascarpone cream and then I poached blueberries in wine and some honey and I made like a syrup with that. To be honest with you, I wish we had a little more pieces of bacon on top. I, I have more. I should have thrown more on it yep. so fast. I think this is just the right amount of bacon, actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think it would have overpowered it yeah. if you're there had been right. any more. You're probably right, Mary. I think you're right. <laughs> I never would have thought of po poaching a kiwi, but it's delicious. It, it is. is. Awesome. Thank you, Chef Anna. Okay, chefs, it is now time for the judges to deliberate your last dish. You may now exit the kitchen. Let's talk about Chef Kim first. Um, and I wish she did not put that pasta back in the pan to harden it, to I, make the crisp. It made it problematic to eat. It had a nice chocolate flavor when you could get to it. Correct. Right. I liked the lemon ricotta. Mm -hmm. the, the whole pumpkin seed brittle, I think she really wanted it to be a brittle. And right. it sort of ended up being a taffy. It was nice with the ricotta, but it wasn't what she wanted, and it wasn't what I was ready for. Right. Let's talk about Anna real quick. This one, this was another area where you could see that she was thinking every minute, she was tasting every single element of that dessert, and she would add a little this and a little that. She would nod if she thought it was okay. And she also seems to just really have an instinct for what 
goes with what? 90% of the time, people are trying to make pasta out of chocolate pasta. You right. Don't do it. You deconstruct right. it, make it a crust of it, and then you don't have to worry about if it's cooked right, if it's crunchy, you, you take that element completely out. Judges, do we have a winner for today's semifinal episode? Yes, we do. Show Me Chefs will return after this. Welcome back to The Kitchen Chefs. It is now time to pick the winner of today's semifinal episode and the finalist on Show Me Chefs. Mary, can you tell us what you liked about Kim's dishes today? I liked the distinctive flavors and the use of the ingredients. And you did a really good job with that appetizer. I really did like the way it looked on the plate. I feel like there could have been just a little bit more on that, but it was a good, a good flavor and a good treatment of the ingredients. The entree, I think we talked about, you know, how difficult it is to cook that cut of meat in a short period of time, but I think you did a really good job. It looked really good on the plate. The flavors were really strong. And, and your dessert was really very good. I enjoyed that pumpkin seed. That was really good. And they went really well with the ricotta. And once I got a taste of that lemon, it really was complimentary. And Joy, can you tell us what you liked about Anna's dishes? Yes. Anna, you are obviously very talented. Very, very good cook. I'm going to fast forward a little to the entree. One of the featured ingredients was this roast. I thought the roast really felt kind of flat. It was pretty tough. There was a lot of window dressing around it, which is really hard to make up for the fact that that is one of the main ingredients. Now the dessert on the other hand, when you put that pasta in that food processor, I'm thinking, what is she doing? You know? it worked. The, the creaminess of the, the sour cream and the cream cheese and the mascarpone and all that together was just delicious. And Angelo, how did both chefs do overall? It was what a, what a treat, huh? Yeah. It was exciting, it was nervous, it was, <laughs> we were just on edge. Yeah. Um, so by saying that, she won the appetizer round, you won the uh, entree round. So the winner of the semifinal round today is... Oh, this is crazy. Chef Anna. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks. Congratulations, Chef Anna. You are the winner of today's semifinal episode. Thank you. Unfortunately, Chef Kim, you are not the winner of today's episode. What will you take away from your Show Me Chef's experience? It was a lot of fun. It was very intense. And I learned quite a bit about myself in the kitchen in here. So it was wonderful. Yeah. Well, we want to thank you so much for being here. You did such a great job. But now you may exit the kitchen. Thank you. I don't like to lose. I'm not a not a big fan of that, but she was uh, a fierce competitor, so I'm glad that she will move on. So I hope that, at least since she beat me, that she can win in the finals. <laughs> Congratulations, Chef Anna. You are the winner of today's episode. How do you feel? Yeah, first thing that goes through my head was, oh, I gotta do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Just one more time. Yeah. No. So, what are you gonna be taking from, you know, your first two episodes to the final? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think everything, you, all you said was very helpful, and I'm gonna really work on those things. Congratulations, Chef Anna. You're going to the finale. You may now exit the kitchen. Um, I was actually surprised. Yeah, I, I honestly didn't know, and I, I was ready for it to go either way pretty easily. So. That's all the time we have today. I'm your host, Rachel Cahoon, here at 319 Event Center. Tune in next week for our second semifinal round, where we have Chef Tommy battling it out with Chef Thomas. All the other ones were pretty terrible. Poor Tommy. <laughs> Four, three, two, one. <laughs> Chefs, your time is up. Oh, <laughs>